Hey guys, Chairman here, back on the Tresses Collectibles channel with my second place BCS 2022 Anaheim Regionals deck profile. Now, this was my first BCS in a long time. I've been judging since 2017, and I haven't really been playing much, but I'm very happy to have played so well at a Regionals in my home turf of California uh, with a deck that I really have spent so much time and effort into polishing. and. Um, you know, I'm just really excited to have this opportunity to go to Worlds as well. And the deck that I took is none other than the deck that I'm kind of known for at this point, which is the Dual Laners TRV deck, uh, this time with an additional splash of the Pachin engine for specific matchups. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already seen the deck list. And I've talked about it before on this channel. It's an upgrade, I would say, of the previous list that I took to top eight at BRO 2022. And also on my personal channel, I've had a list that's quite similar to the current list on a video like a few months ago. So yeah, this has definitely been a long work in progress. And yeah, I'm kind of excited to share the culmination of, of the fruits of my efforts today. So. I'll go over the deck list and the deck profile pretty quickly because I think a lot of people have already seen it. And I kind of want to spend more time talking about how we've got here from the previous list on this channel, which was the BRO 2022 list. Let's get right into it. So starting off at level zero, we are now playing four copies of the Hinata level zero Riki. My BRO list only had one copy at the time, but I was pretty quickly convinced by some friends um, right after the tournament that playing four was the correct number uh, even more so now that we're playing the Pachin engine because this not only searches the Chifuyu for our dual laners but it also searches the level one payons that we need to bring out the Pachins. For copies of level zero Mikey, fantastic card we need it for blue also Mills also clocks ourselves at level zero which is really good and then four copies of the Revenge Takemichi Mills clocks ourselves gets us resources so between the, these three level zeros, we have 12 cards that can clock ourselves at level zero. Perfect for the strategy of hitting ourselves to level one first so that we can play the two Chifuyus uncontested and potentially even lock our opponents at level zero, which means that we just get an extra turn of dual laning and generating stock without our opponent giving us any kind of board pressure. Next, we have two copies of the Draken uh, Mikey Takemichi Drop Salvage. Honestly, this card has been a huge MVP in this deck because of its ability to do double duty for utility. A one copy of this Drop Salvage is basically two copies of anything we want in our waiting room, whether that's two copies of the Chifuyu or two copies of the Peyan or even one and one of each. This also gets us two copies of our finisher towards the late game. So yeah, just really important card that we use to pivot between our various strategies in this deck. And we do run two copies of uh, Brainstorm. It's the Emma Brainstorm as usual. Honestly, this Brainstorm is just the best Brainstorm in this deck. It's really good early because it mills a lot. When you hit uh, Climax on the Brainstorm, you can look at up to three and this deck definitely struggles with deck speed first deck. So that's a huge lifesaver. And then the top check, uh, effect which allows us to determine which card we want to trigger from the top two of our deck is really important so that early on we don't trigger climaxes and keep our stock clean so we can really build that stock compression and then on our furnishing turn we use that trigger confirm to be able to side for exact amounts of damage um, this deck does a lot of siding on its finishing turn at level three because we don't want to be swinging for threes and fours we want to be siding for ones and twos so uh, the emma definitely helps us uh, be able to do that. So that's our level zero lineup. Moving on to level one. Of course, we are playing four copies of the dual laner Chifuyu himself. We've cut the Bajis because we don't need those in this current strategy. Uh, all we're playing is the Chifuyu for the stock generation. And instead of Baji, we're basically playing the one zero payons as kind of our way to get hand advantage. So if you guys don't know what the payon does, uh, it gives all our Pachins 4,000 power. And we can on play shuffle back two revenge characters from our waiting room into the deck to give one of our characters 2000 power. And then as a spammable brainstorm, you can pay one mill three. And if you hit one of the two one Pachins, you can summon it. So basically it allows us to cheat out Pachin early and also not have to play the Pachin from our hand. We can just pay one. And if we hit it on the brainstorm, we just plus one basically. And yeah, that's kind of how we get our hand advantage in the matchups when we need it. 
So this has basically replaced the role of Baji in our deck. Next, we're playing three copies of the Mitsuya. It's also a very important card to pivot between various strategies of our deck, similar to the Drop Salvage, because a lot of things in this deck wants to be played in duplicates, for example, two dual laners or two copies of the Payon. So Mitsuya represents ways to get to the other copy pretty easily once we have one on the field. It's also really good with our two soul trigger climaxes and allowing us to salvage key cards from our waiting room whenever we trigger those. And also just a good way to get climaxes out of our hand or otherwise unplayables out of our hand to get other playables into our hand. So yeah, still a pretty important card. I have a lot of success with this in this deck. Uh, next, we have two copies of the 1-1 Takemichi counter. Honestly, probably one of the more important cards of this deck because um, of how easy it is for this deck to grab this counter by playing a split soul salvage climax and also just how important it is for this card to protect our 1-0 Chifuyu. Without this card, our 1-0 Chifuyu is very easy to um, beat over with like just basically any climax combo and yeah, we, we just wouldn't be able to win lanes at all at level 1 but with the 1-1 counter we can threaten 9-5 power, we win a lane and then that just helps our game plan so much in the mid game so we can stay on Chifuyu longer in most matchups. Yeah, this is honestly a super important card. Uh, pretty bad to cut if you value being on Chifuyu for more than just like one turn. All right, next, uh, of course, at level two, we are playing four copies of the man himself, Mr. Pa Chin. We bring him out with Payon. He is going to be 16-5 if we have two copies of the Payon in the back row and basically just beats over anything <laughs> in the current meta. Uh, no standby deck can really stand up to the might of the Pachin. And even if we don't brainstorm and hit, if we just have Pachins in hand and we're level 2, we can just play them from hand. It just costs the same amount of stocks. So yeah, Pachin definitely is a really good card in certain matchups where we would otherwise lose by just playing pure dual laners. Alright, and then for our finishing package, we are on two copies of the Baji, four copies of the level 3 Mikey, and three copies of the level 3 Mitsuya. So I've cut one copy of the level 3 Mitsuya, trimmed it down just to make more room for other cards in this deck. Between Mikey and Mitsuya, Mitsuya is definitely the one that's a little weaker because the milling is random and burning high amounts of damage isn't exactly preferable. You do want to burn like one or two rather than three or four in this and in this deck you kind of burn three or four quite often. <laughs> um, but it is still a very important card to uh, increase the ceiling of our finishing turn as well as mill cards on the finishing turn so that we can get to the climax that we need so that we can use the Baji to salvage it. So it's definitely still a really important card. And I think at three, it's like a really nice number because with the Mitsuya, it's easy to loop. It's easy to have like one in hand and then probably have one in waiting room so that we can loop it if we do need it. So yeah, and then of course for our climax spread, we are on the trusted two pants and six stocksel with the four being the Mitsuya combo just in case, you know, if we somehow can't get to our pants, then we can always just end with the Mitsuya combo. And, you know, hopefully that is enough to close out the game. So yeah, that's the deck list. Pretty straightforward, a lot of uh, max copies of a lot of important cards. So I think the deck list is pretty optimized in that regard. It's kind of hard to trim anything from this deck. I've thought about a lot, but every card really plays an important part. And maybe you could come up with some kind of like really optimized number by like trimming the fat off of like various four ofs, but then you just lose a lot of consistency. And I don't know if that's something that you're you're already sacrificing a lot of flexibility. And if on top of that you sacrifice consistency, then yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it won't work, or maybe it will. Who knows? I, I would love for you guys to try it out and uh, see if you can make any improvements on this list. Now I just really wanted to talk about how we got here from our previous list um, in BRO 2022. If you look at that list, you'll find that it's actually pretty similar to this deck. Um, we were playing the Bajis at the time, but of course the role of Baji has been replaced by the Payons. We were playing the bike uh, Mitsuya to kind of protect our board, but we no longer need that because of, of the Pachins. The Pachins never lose board. 
So in the, the matchups where we previously needed to have the bike in order to encore one of our Chifuyus, so to speak, and just be able to maintain board. Um, in those matchups, we now just go into Pachin and we just beat their board and we no longer have the need um, to maintain our own board and you know we just always get our advantage from Pachin living. And then in that build, we also ran four copies of My Treasure Baji, which is honestly a really good card and I wish I had room in this deck to play that card in high quantities. Um, it's not a very good card if you only play like one or two. Definitely a better card once you start playing three and four, but we just really don't have the room for it. Um, as I said, I think I still value level zero Hinata more. Um, just having more copies of ways to clock ourselves is really, really important. And also Hinata being able to search um, either the Chifuyu or the Peyon, I think is very integral to this deck. But yeah, if I had like 54 slots in this deck, then yeah, the next four would probably be the My Treasure Bajis, because I think that card is it's really good. It helps us mill and grab specific cards that we need. Yeah, since VRO, I've been tinkering with this deck. I think the most recent innovation was adding the Peyon and the Pachin to kind of fix a lot of the bad matchups that this deck would otherwise have. Uh, specifically, Kanata Marine was the one that this this package really just comes in clutch and turns that matchup from basically a completely losing matchup to now a completely winning matchup. It's really, really crazy how much of a difference this little package makes uh, for that. And also some standby decks, this also smooths out those matchups as well. And altogether, basically with this deck, there are no losing matchups in the current meta that I can think of. Like everything, you are at least favored, if not just completely favored. However, the deck is pretty fragile and whenever something goes wrong, it can quickly slow snowball out of control. You don't really have that much flexibility or tools to kind of like take uh, a detour from the main game plan and fix your deck state or fix your issues. You kind of have to just stick to the main game plan of either dual lane or going to Pachin. And yeah, just not, not a lot of flexibility when you're playing the deck. But once you get on that track, then it's really hard for your opponent to stop your momentum and uh, stop you from just winning the game. So yeah, that's it for this deck profile. Um, if you guys are interested in my tournament report, I did do a live stream a few days ago, recapping kind of my tournament run. It's on my channel, personal channel, and with timestamps, so you, know, you don't have to just sit there trying to find the stuff that you wanna to listen to. You can just use the timestamp to help you navigate. Um, and I also, on my channel, around this time, I will be uploading a video talking about just some tips and tricks to playing this deck, because I do know that this deck is kind of weird, it's very different, and maybe a little hard to kind of grasp, especially the early game, which is like the trickiest part. And so I just kind of compiled some, some ideas to think about in that video, and so if you're curious on kind of how I've been playing the deck, especially the early game, how I mulligan, like kind of what I prioritize. And if you're interested in picking up the deck, then I highly recommend you jump over there and check that video out. And yeah, with that being said, uh, I'm just really thankful, you know, for having this opportunity and kind of making the most of it. I'm you know, very proud of kind of how I played that day. I think I played very well. And once again, yeah, thanks to all the people who are part of the TRV think tank helping um, yeah, conceive this deck and kind of giving me a lot of inspiration to improve and uh, just make this this absolute wild deck that it is. Thanks to Tresses Collectibles for yeah really supporting me as well, uh, even though I'm usually far away from SoCal, that you know they still keep me in the loop, keep me into playing Weiss. So yeah, all, all in all, I'm really excited for Worlds. We'll see if we bring this deck or maybe even improve this deck or bring something else. And I guess you guys just have to wait to see what I'll do there. Hopefully we can take it all the way there. All right, and that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.